Well, welcome everyone. My name is Lynn O'Brien and I am privileged to be our Women's Empowerment Coordinator with the City of Webster Groves this summer. I've been able to work with Dr. Peoples and our team at City Hall to put together this series. So I'm gonna give you a brief overview of how today will work. Then we'll jump in and we'll be wrapped up um, within the hour. So this is our first slide here. Um, I'll do a couple introductions in a moment, but this will be a one hour webinar and yes, it is recorded. So if for some reason you need to hop off or if you're watching this after the fact, it will be available and I will email to you at the same email address that you got the Zoom link, um, a link to that recording. Um, as far as Zoom, our speaker will indicate how you can engage, but basically there's a chat and a Q&A option and your mic and camera will be off for our time together but I'm sure you'll still feel like you're part of the conversation. And then at the end, we'll take a few minutes. There's a five minute survey that we would be so grateful for you to fill out about what you took away. Um, and as you may have heard, there's a micro grant opportunity for those who identify as women who live in Webster, who work in Webster Groves, um, who complete all three webinars or watch recordings of all three webinars. So completing that survey is kind of your ticket to get a short application for that $1,500 micro grant. And I'll follow up with that information at the end. So before I introduce our speaker, I would love to um, have Mayor Arnold uh, say a little something to get us started. So glad you all are here. Yes, thank you, Lynn. Thank you all for being with us today. This is something new for us in the city of Webster Groves, and I personally find it very exciting. Uh, one of our residents, Mindy Mazur, introduced those of us at City Hall to an organization called United We, and we, um, some of you may have joined us in February for the appointments project as we try and get more women involved in our boards and commissions. But part of that also introduced us to the City Inclusive Entrepreneurship Network from the National League of Cities, um, which is providing us funding for this grant. And we are truly grateful for that funding and the opportunity that it's gonna provide. I wanna give a special thanks to our city manager, Dr. Marie Peoples, who really conceived of this project and the series and the grants and to Lynn for, um, her work in getting this implemented. We really hope that this provides some, something new and, and something very helpful to uh, our, our business community here in Webster. So enjoy, and I'm thrilled we're starting with Christy Jackson. I don't think there's a better way to start off this series. So thanks for being with us, Christy. Thank you. Hey, Lynn, I think you're muted still. Muted. Oh, yes, it will be much more exciting if you can hear what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, I was just going to say thank you so much, Mayor Arnold. Really appreciate you being here and to Dr. Peoples for being an amazing steward of this project coming to be. And without further ado, um, I would love to introduce Christy Jackson, who is the owner of BK Solutions LLC. Um, she is really a bright light and a force of nature um, from everything I've heard around the community and seen of her work. She has a relatable style and catalyzes action. Uh, Christy serves as the executive director of the Center of Innovation and Entrepreneurship at Harris Stowe University's uh, Anheuser Busch School of Business. And She's a sought out consultant, coach, author, and professional speaker with 20 years of experience creating purpose driven projects, facilitating training, and empowering a variety of startup, corporate, nonprofit, and higher education clients to dream and launch. So you can see why we were excited to partner with Christy for today to present Bizpiration, business inspiration to help you maximize your growth. I'll pass it off to you, um, Christy. And just as a reminder to all of you, this is the first of three webinars. So upcoming is Gabriela Ramirez Arellano and then Precious Simone. Thanks again. And we'll be right here to help with Q&A and chat if you have any questions along the way. Thank you. Thank you. One thing that I did not add is that I am a mom of two Webster graduates. And so I should have included that uh, in, my, in my bio. 
Good afternoon, everyone. It is so look, I'm looking at the time to make sure that it's still uh, that it is afternoon. Thank you, thank you, thank you uh, so much for the opportunity uh, to be here, Lynn, uh, to Mayor Arnold, and to everyone here that has said yes to spending a little time in your afternoon to be inspired, to focus on your business goals and your business growth. And I look so forward to uh, our time together. Now, what I will say is that as excited that I get about spaces where women gather, where entrepreneurs gather, I will say that webinars give me a little bit of the willies because I cannot see your beautiful faces. I cannot feel your amazing energy. And so I'm hoping to get some of that uh, through the chat. Lynn is going to help us with any questions that you might have, uh, any comments. I'm going to ask you to please participate. We're going to give you some prompts because really this time in this space is about you. Uh, there is value when we can all come together and just sort of learn from each other's uh, stories. And so, um, again, I am so thrilled uh, to be here with you all today. And my goal really here is to inspire you a little bit, to share some of the uh, experiences that I have had along my journey to dreaming big, to sinking really big, <laughs> and ultimately launching uh, successful businesses. And uh, the beauty of this, again, is that this is a full circle moment uh, for me being here today. Uh, I was the uh, gifted and talented district coordinator in Webster Grove School District for several years, and both of my daughters are graduates, as I stated before. So it is wonderful. I know the community. I value, I love the Webster Groves community. And so I'm so excited to come back and uh, share a little bit about lessons that I have learned along my journey as an educator and entrepreneur. Uh, so I'll give you a little insight into my past. Now, this might be what you don't know about me. And uh, in looking at my, my picture here, I would say I was probably about six, maybe six or seven and I sort of chuckle because it must be amazing. You know, my, I guess my parents knew the trajectory of my journey. You know, I'm in my leisure suit at six or seven years old. I have no idea where I'm going, but apparently I must be there on time because I also have a watch uh, on my wrist. And so, you know, sometimes what is this? What do we say? Leaders are born or developed. So I, I believe that I was a leader that was born. But it was because of the inspiration from uh, my mom and my dad. And I refer to my mom as the dreamer. You know, she was, is a professional singer. Uh, she has traveled the world singing uh, various in gospel groups and performing on Broadway, uh, recording. And, you know, mom is really the creative. And she always taught us that, you know, whatever you want to do in life, dream big, but you must be willing to do the work to accomplish those dreams. And my dad, I call him the disruptor. He was the first African-American manager for the Procter & Gamble company. And, you know, the picture that I have here uh, of my dad, his Afro is not as big as mom's Afro, but by the time he made it to that position, his Afro had grown out a little bit. You know, that was sort of the pride uh, of, of that at that time was how big your Afro can grow, right? And so, um, but that wasn't appealing to a managerial role. And so he was challenged in that. And so he was given, you know, the option that you will either keep this job or you will cut your hair. And so along with some other uh, choice words, my father let them know that he was going to keep his hair, but he was willing to, you know, push past those limitations. And what he taught me was that you have to be willing to stand up for what you believe in, but you must be willing to take the consequences. And so again, ultimately he did lose that job, but he went on to become the first African-American manager in several other companies. So it was meant to be. So I consider myself a dreamer and a, a disruptor. So when I'm showing up, understand that you're going to get some inspiration, you're going to get a little push, a little disruption, but it's all for the cause of growing and making us better and better in collaboration. And so I sort of chuckle when I look at this slide because I was one of those students that was so busy, so curious, so uh, creative and antsy, and I always used to get in trouble for talking. But now I can say, I get paid for talking. So I just love looking at this slide and I encourage those moms or dads that are here 
that have those inquisitive, talkative children find an outlet because it works. And what I learned to do was to put my words into books. And so I became an author where I create a curriculum around a business development, entrepreneurial mindset growth, uh, even children's books around entrepreneurship. And so it has been an amazing journey to be able to share a part of my story. So today we are going to focus on some bispiration. And I'll tell you a little bit more because that word may not be uh, as familiar to you, but I'll tell you a little bit of the backstory on it as we get through our, our time together. But that's the educator in me. I'm always going to start with what is our end goal? What do we want to walk away with an understanding of uh, based on our time together? And so I love this idea, this concept that women who wonder will change the world. So the whole, uh, the whole purpose of our talk today really is owning your wow. What are those moments that we um, that that wow us? And when we think about our bispiration, that business and inspiration where that comes together, these are key takeaways that I want us to remember is that women who wonder will change the world. Uh, saying yes to opportunity expands your income and your influence. And then to know your worth and then charge tax. And I'm sure you have heard these things before. So I'm just jogging your memory just for a bit. So before we get into the the meat of the conversation, I'm going to do a little bit of an uh, icebreaker, a little bit of a connector. So in the chat, for those of us that are here, I would like for you to add one word, one word that describes the feeling you get when you imagine your dream business, your dream opportunity, your dream leadership role. What is that one word that would describe that feeling that you get? And I'll tell you what that word is for me. It's bispiration. That one word for me is bispiration. But the root, and while you're doing that, I hope you're adding those, uh, those words to the chat. I'm so curious to click the chat button and to see uh, what, your, uh, what your responses are. Uh, but for me, the root of creativity, oh, wow, I can see it. Okay, legacy, accomplishment. Uh, freedom, absolutely, excitement. Thank you all for sharing these. A uh, pride, yes, whole. These are awesome. These so such such awesome words. And for me, the the root here is uh, creativity. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about the power and the wonder of creativity and how it can transform your business, but not only your business but your personal life. And you know, as women. We do have this innate ability to see things differently. And I think that that gives us a little bit of a leg up on sparking creativity and growing in those areas. And so I'm gonna share a little bit of some of the tactics that I use to uh, sharpen uh, creativity from personally for me. Okay, let's see here. All right, there we go. All right, has anyone ever used a, a mind map? And you can sort of respond in the chat. A mind map is a tool that you can use simply by taking those ideas that you have and just dumping them on paper. You know, sometimes we get idea overload. We can be inspired by so many things. And it's a good idea to just kind of get those things out on paper before you evaluate whether or not it's a good idea or not. And so for me, the term bispiration came out of mind mapping. And so when I think about what truly inspires me, it is business strategy and it is creative inspiration. And so I smirched those words together to create the term a bispiration. Now for you, you might say, I have never heard of this word. And Christy Jackson, I think you really made this word up. And I will tell you, I absolutely did. And not only did I make up the word, I built an entire brand around it and I trademarked it. So you're welcome to use the word trade, uh, the word bis, uh, bispiration, but you just need to get my permission first. 
So with uh, Bizpiration, as again, as I said, I created this uh, based on um, just finding that sweet spot of where business strategy comes together and creativity. And a good friend of mine, uh, Jade Harrell, who is an Emmy Award winning uh, journalist, she has done an amazing TED talk on word smirching. And so if you have an opportunity to, uh, to Google that, I encourage you to, uh, to take a look at it. But I have used that as inspiration as I said, to create an entire brand. And so how does that set me apart? Because it's a memorable term. And so I want you to know that creative uh, thinking inspires your unique value proposition. There are so many options that your customers, your clients can choose. And so your unique value proposition is that piece that separates you from the rest. So oftentimes when we think about creativity, we think about creative expression and we don't add, uh, assign a lot of value to it. Now, I will say, I know that in the Webster Girls community, creativity is a value. And that is one of the reasons why I felt so fortunate to be a part of uh, the school district in Webster Groves, where investments were made into uh, um, supporting students through the arts and through creative thinking. And so when you think about how creativity adds value uh, to your business, it comes through visualizing your success. You know, we talk about um, meditation and we talk about seeing things before they come into fruition, but that doesn't only work internally. It's also important for your clients and your customers to be able to visualize that success. You want to allow the audience to envision themselves benefiting from what you have to offer. So if you think about advertisements, right? I'm thinking about, uh, you know, these car uh, commercials where they show you driving down this long, you know, wide open road. You can sort of feel the wind blowing and feel the sense of freedom. Someone mentioned that uh, in the chat. And so it's important to allow that creativity to help you tell your success to help you. And it, again, we're talking about business, but we're also talking about, uh, excuse me, we're also talking about leadership. And so there are various areas where visualizing su success will add value. But even sharing your stories, you know, I was thinking about, you know, we have all of this uh, access to information, right? We can quickly Google, you know, how to start a successful business. It's all there. But we continue to gather in communities like this because we wanna learn from each other's stories. And sometimes, especially we as women, we are afraid to share the highs, the lows, the indecision, the um, lack, lack of confidence, but we have to share the entire journey. And not only does that add to your personal growth, but to your value proposition, because your customers will begin to prefer you because they can relate to your brand, or they can relate to the stories and the experiencings that you're sharing, your experiences that, that you are sharing. So you have to paint a picture for them. And, you know, as we see on uh, social media, if we didn't see a picture about it, it didn't happen, right? So you're painting a picture through creativity of the value of what you offer. What do you bring that differentiates your product or your service from any other company that may be competing in that same space? And what you can do with these stories, because your clients, your customers, they will be, begin to share their stories with you. And those will become your testimonials or your case studies that will add to your credibility. So there is value in creativity. So I want to pause here and check in with Lynn to see if there are any questions or if there are any uh, comments that uh, we need to address before we uh, move on to our next uh, portion. Thank you, Christy. This is so energizing and inspiring already. We don't have any active questions at the moment, but y'all, I'm watching. So if you do have questions along the way, I can feed those to Christy as we go. And we do have a lot of engagement in the chat. So yes. please carry on. You're, you're rocking it. 
All right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I love to check in because it all, always begins with just a little spark. And I really like to encourage uh, us around creativity because this is our factory setting. We all come with creative ideas. We all come with unique perspectives. And over time, we've seen the research that we as adults are not as confident in tapping into our creative differences as we were when we were younger. And so what I've learned to do is to return to that because again, that is my unique differentiator. And so it's all about creating the courage to share. It's all about creating the space to develop it. And so conversations like this hopefully will inspire you to do that uh, for yourself. So as we uh, move through creativity, You've gotten to know uh, a little bit about me and what inspires me and the spaces that I, I love to uh, thrive in. And so I feel like we know, a we know each other a little bit better. And so I'm about to get into your business, all right? I'm about to get all up in your business. So track with me, if you will. Saying yes to opportunity, it expands your income and your influence. But I have a question for you. I have a question for you. How many opportunities have you let pass you by in the last 30 days that you should have said yes to? And, you know, when these opportunities come our way, you know that it's something that you should have said yes to when you have to take the time to talk yourself out of it. You take the time to talk yourself out of it. You give yourself all of these reasons why you should not say yes. So hopefully by the end of this conversation, you will rethink that because you'll begin to see that there is a connection to saying yes to opportunities and you'll discover the value in those opportunities. So I've got a little bit of a riddle for you. Okay, a little bit of a riddle. We have five frogs on a log. One says she's going to take the leap to the next log. So how many are left? Give you a second to give us that answer. How many are left? Five frogs on a log. One says she's going to take the leap to the next one. So how many are left? Lynn, do we have any answers coming in yet? We do. We have um, five, five, five. She only said she was going to leap, to which I commented, ooh. Then we have five, zero, five until she actually does it. These folks are on it. And five. Hey, who was the first one to say uh, she only said she was going to take the leap? Who was that? Tammy. Tammy. I will give you a virtual high five, Tammy, because you are right on it. Absolutely. She only said she was going to take the leap. What I've learned is that systems and processes are what we have to lead with. Decisions, internally making those decisions prior to the opportunity, because we'll be prepared to take the opportunity. Because motivation may show up on a good day, but sometimes it will not. So we cannot rely on motivation to lead us to take advantage of opportunities because we say things all day long, but do we actually do it? So Tammy, you are spot on. This little frog has probably let so many opportunities pass her by, but hopefully we won't be like that little frog. But let's talk about some of the reasons why we don't take the leap. Why don't we take the leap? What are your thoughts? Go ahead and add to the chat. What do you think the number one reason that we don't take the leap? I see responses here of fear. Some folks struggling with the opposite problem, saying yes to too many so-called opportunities, diffusing my focus and energy. Yes. Others be preparing, scared, or because then you need to actually follow through and do it. So yes. really 
Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think I heard someone mention that uh, it is the fear. Uh, did someone say the fear of failure? Did I, did I see, hear that? Heard fear. We do have fear mentioned a few times. And yeah, that's we do have fear. All right. So I want to uh, tap in. These are all real reasons why we don't say yes to opportunity. But fear is one of the leading reasons why we don't. And I want to talk a little bit about fear, sort of uh, dispel some myths about fear. Um, you know, what are the, there are only two fears that we're born with. There are only two fears. Does anyone know what those two fears are? Somebody said, you know what? I am taking a quiz here. I'm coming to this session today and I feel like I'm getting so many pop quizzes. But yes, I want us to walk away with true, with truth. I want us to walk away with accurate information and rethinking our entrepreneurial mindset. And so I appreciate you engaging um, with our questions. But what do you think are the two fears that, that we're born with? This was interesting when I, when I learned this. We've got some submissions of fear of living, fear of death or the unknown, falling, fear of death, success and failure, fear of abandonment, rejection, fear of death. Okay, okay. Thank you for those. And I'm so glad to actually hear those examples because the only two fears that we are born with are the fear of falling, and that's why I have the image here, and it is the fear of loud noises. Those are the only two fears that we're born with that are required for our survival. So any other fears that were mentioned are learned fears. They're fears that we have learned. And so if we can learn them, we can unlearn them. So I encourage you through saying yes to opportunities that may get you outside of your comfort zone, that is an opportunity to unlearn fears. There are only two that we're born with, and that is falling and loud noises. So every other fear is one that we have learned. So let's talk about killing your comfort zone. How do we do that? It's about, say, it's about staying uh, safe. I get it. It's about making mistakes. And, you know, we talk about fears, another common fear, people say another common fear is public speaking, right, in front of people, but that's really not the fear. The real fear behind that is looking silly in front of people. It's not the public speaking, it's the fear of looking silly. So let's get beyond those comfort zones, right? How do you do that? How do you do that? How do you get beyond that comfort zone? So it begins with embracing the unfamiliar. It's about trying something new, getting beyond what you think you already know. For me, as I said, if I had a preference, I would be standing in front of you. I would be able to reach out and touch. I would be able to see your smiling faces. I'd be able to see all of your reactions and all of your responses. But we've got to get beyond the comfort zone and try to um, let you feel and experience that same energy through this screen. And so that's embracing those things that are unfamiliar with us. For, for a lot of us, a technology is unfamiliar. So the fact that you're showing up today and being able to create, a, be a part of this community, community virtually is awesome. But when opportunities arise that seem unfamiliar, even slightly intimidating, you got to just take that deep breath and go for it because that is where real growth happens outside of the comfort zone. So networking and collaborating. Networking and collaborating is a huge opportunity for you to kill your comfort zone. And you will be surprised of the opportunities to, uh, the opportunities that will come from networking and collaborating. And one of the reasons why people don't like to network is because of fear. We talked about that, looking silly, not feeling prepared, maybe committing to something that they don't want to follow up with. 
But what you have to do is find that community that you do feel safe connecting with, find that community that is also adding value to you and making sure that you are showing up and being open to the connections that can happen into that space. Because you will be surprised about the new doors that, were, that will open to you that you had no idea. And then diversifying your skill set, learning something new. And, you know, I always say that, you know, I know how to work. I know how to work well, but I really don't know how to play. So I'm learning how to find a hobby, how to do things that are fun. And you might say, well, how does that relate to your entrepreneurial journey? How does that relate to your business, business success? I will tell you that many of the collaborators that I have met have come through social settings. And we were, we were able to create um, a new product or service or opportunity that was adding value to the community. So being able to just try some, being willing to try something new, diversifying your skill set is another way to kill your, your comfort zone. And then pursuing adventure. Oh, Christy, I'm going to hop in here. We do have a okay. question. Good, Hanley, good. Hanley asked, where do we find these communities? Wonderful. I'm so glad you asked that. Uh, social media is a great place to start to find uh, communities, prof uh, professional networking communities, um, you know, uh, hobby communities. And if you're on Facebook, they have a lot of groups that, you know, different groups that you can check into. If uh, you are on LinkedIn, Lots of networking organizations have pages there. They're always posting events, but you could get out of your comfort zone if you're on social media or if you have friends or uh, that you, you know, chat with or colleagues that you chat with and ask them, what are some of the spaces where you go to network? What are some of the spaces that you go to meet other people? I'm telling you, if you put a post out if you are on social media, if you put a post out and said, you know, what are some of the great spaces where women can connect that value entrepreneurship? You will get a long list and I will put one on your list. She Can Connect is my professional women's networking group. There are others, Women Empowering Women. Uh, so, you know, they are out there. It's just a matter of doing the research and asking, uh, asking the questions. And it's about showing up, right? It's about just testing it out. You, you may feel like, oh, this may not be the exact space where I want to, um, to connect, but go give it a chance. And you might be able to uh, find, meet someone there that may have another point of connection for you. So I hope that answers, uh, answers your questions. There are lots of local uh, networking groups here that, that you can connect with. That's great, Christy. Thank you so much. And there's one additional question to, um, that you mentioned that there's a difference with in-person energy and dynamics. Are there yes. any favorites that you have locally in St. Louis? And maybe that's what you're speaking to with the with the She Can Connect. Yes, yes, there are. Um, I I love and. I love She Can Connect for one, because it's a community that I've had an opportunity to create uh, with women that is a safe space uh, for women that are authentic. They really love to uh, collaborate. And uh, we have social events. We have professional events. Uh, women Empowering Women is another um, organization. My friend Michelle Stockman is the founder of that. And that is also, uh, they meet uh, monthly uh, during the day with luncheons and they bring in speakers. So, you know, it just, you just have to sort of find, uh, you know, your community. And I can, I'm happy to share uh, that information with you if you'd like to start there. But I would bet that there are women in this very uh, webinar that could add to the chat some spaces that they network and that they connect. So if you um, have some of those spaces or networks, please add that to the chat. That's Thank a great you. idea. Thank you, Christy. Thank you. That's the beauty of community. We can come together and we can share our resources. Um, and so please, if you have a space that, that you, meetings that you join or spaces that you go, um, please add that to the chat. All right. So 
we're talking about saying yes to opportunity, getting out of our comfort zone. Has anyone seen the, the latest uh, Barbie movie? And I will be totally honest with you. Barbie blew my mind because I, listen, I'm just being honest. I was not a Barbie girl. I was not a Barbie fan, but I have seen how this particular brand, you know, I'm looking at it from the brand perspective, how it brings together women, how it empowers women. And uh, this particular movie really was, it, it was so good. It, it, it was beyond what I imagined uh, it to be. And it really was about women understanding their value. And, you know, Barbie got outside of the Barbie world and was blown away because it was so male dominated. And so in her Barbie world, that's where women led. That's where women thrive. But it was her getting outside of her comfort zone, going beyond what she knew. And it took some coaxing, you know, from the weird Barbie. I'm not calling her the weird Barbie. That was her name in the movie. It took some coaxing. And I'm, I'm not going to give a spoiler alert if, if you haven't had a chance to see it. But it was just amazing how through this particular movie, it is also about getting outside of your comfort zone, saying yes to those opportunities, because you never know what impact it's going to be able to make that's not only going to make you stronger or to help you to grow, but the impact that it had on others. Has anyone uh, else had a chance to see the movie and had some takeaways from it? If you did, put some of those uh, in the chat. I just think it's it's really interesting um, and and so smart. You know, I'm just blown away by the the branding uh, model that is being uh, that that's out here around this uh, this Mattel uh, Barbie. Uh, brand. It is, it is just amazing. So I'm also uh, taking notes uh, on that. All right. So Barbie does remind us to, you know, aim high, go after those dreams. But this is also what I loved about the Barbie movie is that she reminded us that we are real women. That was one of the themes that I took away from it. Yes, she was a doll. But when she went into the real world, she got to see that she was an empowered woman. She was enough. And so if we don't remember anything else, this is what I want us to know, especially us as women. You can choose to be larger than life, but you don't have to. And so you see here the question, what is your superpower? Because we're now going to be talking about understanding your value and charging tax to that. So as I think, as I pose this question to you, you know, we always talk about our superpower and, uh, you know, we always talk about being unicorns and that we're larger than life and that we can do all of these things. And if that is your perspective, is that if that empowers you, I celebrate that. But what I want us to know is that we don't have to be larger than life. So I ask you this question. What is either your superpower or what is your greatest strength? And we're going to work a little bit with this response. So I want you to take a moment and think about that. And I want you to put that answer in the chat. What is your superpower or what is your greatest strength? And I will tell you, that is something that I have been navigating to find what is my greatest strength. And what I have learned is that it is convening authentic women. It is being a creative catalyst, inspiring creativity in others. And I am so proud of that because it has been a personal journey of development for me to learn how to own my wow and to learn how to be courageous in my creativity. And so as I began to go along that journey for myself, I was able also to help other women to discover that for themselves. So let's hear some of, uh, some of these responses. Say it loud, say it proud. What are your greatest strengths? What are your superpowers? 
There are some really inspiring responses coming in here, Christy. Shall I read a few aloud? Please, I would love that. To see the big picture, helping others, perseverance, being detail-oriented, building trust and rapport with clients almost immediately, being a connector, being securely authentic, creative and motivating others, genuinely caring about others, and taking comfort in knowing I can't do everything and I'm not going to be able to do everything. Caring and patient and empathy is what we have so far. Oh, that is awesome. And do you know that this is also a part of your brand? These aspects, your greatest strength are part of your personal brand. And those of us that are entrepreneurs will see that these aspects of your personal brand will be shown in your professional brand through your business. So women know that when I am invited to the table, women know when DK Solutions, uh, when they are, when we are working on a particular project through our creative consulting company, we're going to bring creative ideas to the table. You're going to be working with trust worthy collaborators through that process. And so I love these responses that you know who you are and that you can take those strengths and be proud to speak about those and also get that feedback from your customers and clients to validate that through your testimonials. So again, sharing those stories openly and one of the ways um, that I have been able to also help women to discover, because for some of you, you say, I really don't know what it is. And there, I was there. I was there. I could do so many things um, that, you know, and that probably sounds like, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm not professing at all that I'm superwoman. But my point is that because I'm so curious, I'm willing to try a lot of different things things, you know? And so um, I had to discover where do I find the most value and the most joy? So where am I providing the most value and where is that sweet spot of joy for me? Because I didn't realize that I had a choice. I thought I had to lean into those gifts, those strengths that were just beneficial to other people that I had. But, you know, it's something about turning 40 and it's even something more special about turning 50 because I'm real clear now that I have a choice. I have a choice. And so to be able to find that sweet spot of the value that you bring and this uh, strength brings joy to you, it is a wonderful place to be. And so I created uh, the Bispiration Toolkit cards to help women, individuals use imagery as a creative um, a springboard to help them think about ideas or to help them to validate or verbalize uh, the ideas that they have. And so through our Bispiration cards, and you can see, we have used these cards in so many different uh, settings to help women uh, give, get the language that they need, to be able to articulate uh, new ideas, uh, to articulate affirmations. Um, and we even use these in strategic planning sessions. We sort of use it as a foundation to identify what are the most critical themes, what are the most critical aspects of a project that we need to pull out inspired by uh, an image. And it really allows us to drill down in a deeper way. And we're gonna do a little bit of practice with that today. So I'm going to show you an image. I want you to take a look at the picture. Okay. Now, just as there is value in understanding what your strength is, remember we said that people want to be along for the journey, right? So I want you to look at this card and I want you to think about how this image connects to a struggle that you have. How does this image connect to a struggle that you have? I want you to put that answer in the chat. And I will, you know, I'm always, I'm transparent with, with me. I'm, I'm gonna be, you know, honest and, and tell you where I am with this. For me, it was allowing someone to carry me. 
that was my struggle. It was, you know, accepting help because, you know, as a woman, as a black woman, I always have, you know, this pressure of feeling that I have to show up fully, right? And, um, you know, in, in competing in various spaces that we have to show up ready, not being vulnerable, not showing that we have a need or we're not fully prepared. And so I had developed uh, this um, inability to accept help from others. But as I said, over time, when I learned the value of sharing my story with others, sharing, asking for help, you know, I even had a uh, former uh, colleague tell me, you know, sometimes it's good to just ask for help for the sake of building relationships. Now, I certainly value relationships, and I hadn't even really thought about it in that way, because there are some things that, yes, you could probably do it on your own. But it's even better when you can build those new relationships and collaborate with others to, uh, I like to say, to 10x the idea or the experience or the opportunity a bit. So for me, it was, you know, allowing people to help me, allowing people to uh, to carry me. And so that's something that I had to learn to, uh, you know, to, to be more uh, vulnerable with and asking for help. Am I alone? Is there anybody else out here that, that uh, sees any struggles? that they've had to uh, to work through? Yes, a couple of the comments are feel the fear and do it anyway. Mm. Trying to help the first timer fly forward confidently. Oh yeah. And trying to get help on the computer and, and another asking for help. Yes, yes. I tell you, it is, um, we know these things cognitively that we should do it. But it is just something innate about, you know, we as women wanting to be able to be all things to all people. And so I hope that, you know, you think a little differently about that in this space, that um, you do find a community where you can share the things that you need help with and learn and grow and be vulnerable. Um, that is a, a community of women. It was something that I, had been seeking. And um, so the opportunity to create that space through our She Can Connect uh, Women's Network has just really been the greatest uh, blessing for me because I realized that there were other women that were searching for similar spaces. So it has, it has just been, been amazing. Um, and so again, Lynn, I, I thank you for creating this virtual space for women in the Webster community and uh, because it is so needed. And you always say, you know, no matter how many networking opportunities we have or events that we have, there still are not enough because it is still, still need those spaces. So thank you for, for sharing those. And, you know, as you identify those aspects, what is the next step, right? Okay, so we said it's asking for help. Okay, it's, uh, you know, I heard someone say, mention technology. So the next step is what can you do setting a goal to get outside of your comfort zone? What is the goal, the next step goal that you can take that takes you a little bit outside of your, your comfort zone to help with that challenge, to help with that struggle. And so it's been fun using the Bispiration cards to do that. So this is really about knowing your worth and then confidently speaking about it, okay? So let's talk a little bit about how we can own our wow, celebrating our accomplishments. Now, you know, I'm using the, the word bragging has come up when we, you know, talk about celebrating our accomplishments and you know that's something that you know we really shouldn't do as women and I say to you brag away brag away celebrate your accomplishments celebrate those things because what that's going to do is inspire the next person that hears you it's either going to inspire them or challenge them so I encourage you don't be afraid to do that and then to be concrete about those things, be concrete about the, the value that you bring to the table. I think I heard someone say that they're very good at helping first timers that, um, you know, need help with launching ideas, right? Maybe not just say I'm good with people, 
okay, that's great. What kinds of people and helping them do what? Okay, so be as specific as you can and being open to sharing that journey. We are always inspired. We always learn from each other's story and then practicing confidence. And yes, it is something that we have to practice every day. It comes easier to some than others, but we absolutely have to practice. And what I try to keep in mind when we're talking about owning our wow is how I talk about it. There's this idea of the growth mindset and the fixed mindset. The fixed mindset that it's always going to be this way, right? I, I didn't, I'm not so strong in the area of technology. So I, it's just something that I just can't learn. But the growth mindset says, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. So let's uh, continue to support and celebrate our wow, knowing our worth, saying yes to those opportunities and being curious and wondering and, you know, creativity, as I said, is really sort of my sweet spot. And what I've heard about Webster Groves is that Webster Groves is one of the uh, creative communities. Is Webster Grove a very creative community? I've seen a distinction there, a uh, noted throughout the community. So which tells me that, uh, you know, there is inspiration everywhere, inspiration everywhere. So I want to end with this fun activity to uh, build a wow women's playlist, right? I love to use music to inspire me. I love to use art to inspire me. I love movies, as you can see with my uh, reference to the Barbie movie. And so is there a song? What is that song that, that gets you in the mold to own your wow? When you're you know, getting prepared for that next meeting, where you're going in to pitch a new idea, when you're getting up to, to, to speak in front of a group that you might have never spoken in front of before, you're meeting with a new client. What is that song that, that gets you ready? Uh, Lynn, do we have any uh, that, are, that are coming in? This girl is on fire. Woo, that's a good one. I love <laughs> that one. Love it. Yeah. I mean, that that always gets us gets us prepared. And I'm telling you, if you're, I'm going to share a quick invitation to an upcoming event that we have. So if you hear any of these songs playing, please know that I have used your ideas and inspiration from this wild women's playlist, because I'm telling you, sometimes we just need the inspiration. So I thank you so much for the opportunity to spend a little time with you. Hopefully there's something that I've shared that you can walk away with. But as I said, I love creating the opportunity to continue the conversation and to do the work. And so I have a Bispiration bundle that is available that includes our Bispiration cards. We have a journal that comes with it as well as a creativity candle. Yes, I have created a candle that gives me the inspiration to sort of get in that serene space that I need to let those ideas flow. And so if you use the QR code here, it will take you to uh, our website where you can learn more about that. Um, but I'm also excited to invite each of you and especially the woman who said, where can I connect? We have an upcoming event on August 17th. It's called Sundresses and Shades, and it is a, a networking soiree at the beautiful View 17. And it is going to be a fun night to get to know women. You can come dressed in your real cute little sundress, but it's also connection, but it's also purpose. We're going to be celebrating a woman-owned uh, nonprofit founder in the community. She's going to be sharing her story of success, Cortega Collins, who is working on an amazing project for the city of St. Louis that we will reveal um, that evening. So it'll be a great space to come and connect and get to know uh, someone new. And so now that you know, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? So if there are any questions or thoughts or comments, I would love to uh, leave this space for that. 
Um, I have a picture here of my book, Dream Sync Launch, which I consider a compass to sort of help you process through creative thinking, to process through the critical thinking, strategy, networking, all of those pieces uh, that it takes to be an entrepreneur. So again, uh, Lynn, the city of Webster Groves, I so appreciate the opportunity to uh, spend a little time with you today. Hopefully something that I've shared has been uh, impactful, inspirational and practical that you can use. And I invite you to uh, stay connected with me. So Lynn, I will turn it back over to you. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much, Christy. We are so lucky and, and let's all give her a round of applause just from your home or office or wherever you are. <laughs> Some of the comments that I'm seeing here are, thank you for sharing your experiences and wisdom. You are amazing. Great presentation with useful suggestions. Thank you so much. I enjoyed this. And I've also posted Christy's website here in the chat. Uh, I so appreciate your expertise and the way that you break down all your experience into such accessible wisdom for all of us. So thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. And feel free to ask a couple of questions, y'all. I'm going to share a few more slides just to close us out and keep us on time, but we definitely want to get to any remaining questions. Um, so I will share here just to wrap up for now. Can you see my webinar slide here? Yes. Okay, great. So this is a QR code to a five-minute survey, and we would be so grateful for you to take five minutes to fill this out about what you took away, how you're feeling. Um, this is really useful information for potential future grants that will allow us to keep uh, lifting up women who can lift up other women. So um, please take a look. The survey link is also on the same page where you registered, which is webstergrovesmo.gov slash empowerwomen. Um, and I will send this out in a follow-up email along with some of the resources that Christy mentioned. So her website, I'll get a link to the She Can Connect group, as well as other resources and networking opportunities that we're compiling for each of you. And then as some of you may have heard about, there is a $1,500 micro-grant opportunity, which we are really lucky to have um, and be able to award up to five people um, the requirements for this particular microgrant um, are that those who identify as women work in Webster Groves and attend all three webinars or watch the recordings, which will each be available a few days after. Um, and you complete this short five minute survey for each. Then there's a really short microgrant application where you can share about your business or your business idea. You can be in any stage of business development and we want to help you take the next step towards your dream. So we'll be able to. Um, to accept micro grant applications from August 8th to 20th, and then award those grants by the end of August. So that could be some, some quick funds for y'all. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, you'll be getting an email from me um, pretty soon from that same email address where you received the Zoom link. And after this, we've got two more on deck. So Gabriella will be sharing Unleash Your Potential, Claim Your Power and Influence, and Precious will be offering leverage your network, build meaningful connections, and unlock opportunities. So we're so, so grateful that y'all could join us today. Um, I want to stop my screen share here and let's see. Okay, we're back. Let's see if we have any other questions here. Okay, thank you to the city of Webster Groves. I agree. Thank you, Webster Groves, for making this possible. Um, Christy, one question is, where is the sundresses and shades? Can you speak to that? I can. I've added the uh, registration link uh, in the chat as well, but it's being held at View 17 in Clayton, and it's the high rise building across from the Galleria uh, on Brentwood. So oh. it'll be on the 17th floor. Beautiful venue. You can see down to the arch. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I invite all of you to uh, come and share. Share the word because we have... Uh, we have space for more for more women to join us. So, sounds great. Thank you. And Tammy, I believe that your question got answered. But can people that missed this session watch a recorded version? Absolutely. There will be a link to a playlist where we'll have all three webinars. And now we're going to put that link right on that page where you registered. So everything will be at that WebsterGrovesMo.gov/EmpowerWomen. And I'll put the link to it in a follow up email. So yes, you can you can watch this every day all day. <laughs> So again, Christy, thank you so much. Um, really appreciate y'all coming and may you be 
empowered and, and uh, really well supported in your next steps. If you have other questions, please feel free to email me. Um, I'm going to put my email in the chat as well, which is obrienl at webstergrovesmo.gov. And that's the same email where you got the Zoom link. So don't hesitate to reach out if you have other ideas or other resources that you'd like to be shared back with this community. All right, we'll close here. Thanks again, y'all. And thank you so much, Christy. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>